What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of the Casey Crew. Welcome. Hello, 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 beautiful people. That's right. We are back. And so far, we are keeping our promise. Mm -hmm. We are taping uh, visually. So you can see us. Yes. I don't know how long it's going to last, but we're going to try to Why keep our work. Why are you leading with negativity, I'm though? I'm just saying, it might, sometimes we might just have to record in the bed, and we, we're not taping in our bed. This is a far cry from being in fuzzy pajamas, feet up in the bed, and being all cozy and comfy. But this is pretty cozy and comfy. Yeah, I, I love it. And, yeah. and, and I, I got to shout out to my son, Lil Logi. Okay. For Christmas, he got us these condoms here. Oh, yeah. Why are you looking you at You almost had me co-sign that. They're, they're called condoms. <laughs> They are not called, I'm sure they're not called condoms. That's what we call them. You they're probably call condoms. them condoms with your like low life friends, but these are foams, Mike foams. Mike condoms. Well, shout out to my son for giving us the Mike condoms. We appreciate it. We don't need condoms. You should know that, son, but we appreciate these. What? When's did last I, time did, I, hold on, did I hear that wrong? What? I said, you said we don't need condoms, son? My son. We, we don't You're need telling your son that we, that. I'm just joking. He don't listen to this podcast. He'll be embarrassed. Why are you promoting the non-use of condoms? Because we do. When's the last time you you seen a condom? Why are we talking about this? It's just the intro. All right. Well, let's get the the, the podcast started. Right. And this is funny. This is great. What's funny and great? What I wanted to start off today. Okay. The line. Oh, I get to peek because nope. now it's not just on your phone. The line between being your kid's friend and parenting. Okay. That line. Let, let, how far is too far? Now, this actually didn't come with. This didn't come from Logan in the condom. It actually came from Madison. Okay. Madison tells me everything about what's going on in her life and when guys flirt with her and guys hit on her and when you guys in the DM and I see y'all motherfuckers in the DM by the way I just want to let y'all know that but anyway that was the appropriate use of the M and the F word okay but anyway yes how far is too far because you know I I give my daughter advice right yes and sometimes the advice might not be the best advice Mm -hmm. because I'm giving her advice as in all dudes are nasty dogs Okay. Um, and maybe I should be giving her advice about, you know, guys are nice and give a guy a shot and give a guy a try. But I give her advice on, nah, he's he's a dog. Don't fuck with him. Now, nah, I don't like the way he came at you. I don't like that flirtatious little text. Like, what? Where is this coming from? I'm because I don't, I don't know this story. And she, tell, she tells you some things. She tells me everything. So is this coming from an actual... Thing, or is this just coming from dirty DMs that she's receiving? Now, I, for instance, like, I'm sorry, Maddie. Please, Maddie, I'm sorry. Like, somebody texted Maddie the other day and was texted like... Texted or DMed? Well, Snapchatted. Okay. All right? Hit her the other day and was like, hey, I love your smile. And Madison was like, what? Why do, why do you act like so you just fainted up? <laughs> hey, I love your smile. <laughs> yeah, I love your smile. I would definitely send him the rolly eye emoji. They're, they're six, 17 years old, baby. Hey. I love your smile. Uh, nah, but, nah, but I'm like, he went a little further. So Madison said. Oh, that was just the intro. Yeah, that was the intro. So okay, Madison go said, ahead. Thank Now you. you got me. So then he was like, how about I just see you with just that smile on later on? What are you, what are you talking about <laughs> no, I'm just for? saying he was going somewhere with he was it. He was, <laughs> At least he was going somewhere He was trying to go. He was trying I mean, to not go for it. my daughter, but if it was my son kicking that game, I'd be like. A smile? Nothing on with just a smile? Okay, if it was my son and he was 21. Nah, B. That's but that's a little bit of game. I, I said, I, I said, all right. So I said, yeah. I, I said, um, I said, you Madison, just reject my high five. I did, yes. So that's the process, that <laughs> right. So I said, yo, Madison, you should reply. You should reply. How about I give you this smile and my dad come with his gun later on? <laughs> that's what I said. Uh huh. Or how about I give you this smile and my dad punch you in your face later on? Did you um? How about I check give you this smile and my dad fucks you up later on? How about I give you this smile? Okay, we and my understand. Door. But that, we we, but we that's get the, the way, trajectory. That's the way I yes. wanted to come back with the foot for Understood. Little dude. You know what I mean? Wait, little dude. Do you know who it was? I, it was yeah, Snapchat. I know who's dude. I'm not gonna tell you. I'll tell you later on who's dude. Oh but wait, you, wait, wait. But just tell me, like, friend. You don't know. I, stranger. I'll tell you later. I mean, he's a a a, a stranger. A friend that's a stranger. <laughs> that's what he is. He ain't no friend no more. He ain't coming to my house. I beat that little thing up. He said that. Yes. But so you're not making this up. Do I look like I'm making it up? But Madison is 18 and guys are going to be trying to. But at that point, I was like, damn. 
Did I cross the line? Because that's something I would have said to you when we were dating back in the day. I can't wait to see that. Just later on, just wear that smile with nothing on. I mean, if I'm your girl and we're intimate, then it's okay. But he's just trying to holla. And he came from left field like that. Which begs the question, like, you thought that that would work? Like, you thought that that would be effective? Yes, because he like probably... Like, I was joking before. No, 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 but, but he seriously. probably tried this before and it probably worked. Like, yes, he tried that. He had the confidence girls to try are, it because Young it girls are so easily impressed. Exactly. So he I mean, tried... I look at me with you. I know, but it worked. But it worked for me. <laughs> so this kid probably thought, I'm going to throw a haymaker and it might work. Mm -hmm. So it made me sit there and be like, damn. Or even with, with Logan, right? Logan went to a party. <clears throat> And the party got messed up. So I pulled Logan to the side. It got messed up. Well, I'm going to provide a better description of what you're talking all about. All right. There was there was a, a situation at the party. The, the police had to come and the party kind of ended. Right. That's like the last two parties he went to. Right. So I right. pulled Logan to the side. I'm like, yo, Lo, what I would do if I was you is I would I would hit the girl and I'd be like, yo, you know, it's so messed up that people just can't have a, a, a good time at a party. Because there was a party I, at, at a girl's house. Right. I said, right. you know. They just, they tried to ruin your birthday. How about I just, you know, take you out and, you know, just try to make it up to you just so that way, you know, you don't have to remember for your birthday that bullshit. <laughs> oh, so the nice time is going to erase her memory. That's that cheese. That's that cheese. That's that cheese. What? But what? If you were a, if you're a little kid and you say, yo, they fucked up your party. Hey, how about I had nothing to do with them messing up your party. But you know what? To make it up, why don't we just go out for some To whatever. take your mind off of it. But I'm not going to just erase your whole memory. I'm going to try. But last I thought that was G. I thought that was kind of fly. Erase your whole memory. But you see what I'm saying? Like, I feel like maybe I'm, am I too close to my kids? You know my parents didn't have the sex conversation with me Ever. yet. <laughs> you, you still don't know. I'm where like to put 30 it? years old, 29, uh, mm -hmm. and my parents haven't had the sex conversation yet. Like no birds and bees. I don't know where the penis goes. I don't know none of that. Oh, and it showed. <laughs> it showed. <laughs> I mean, my cousin told me there was three holes down there, and I, I've been looking for the three there holes ever since. since. <laughs> That's what my cousin told me. But uh -huh. anyway, but I mean, there are three holes. I know. What are there? We'll, we'll talk about that later. We'll no, talk let's about talk that. about it now. No, no, let's talk about it now. No, I don't want to talk about it now. Let's talk about it now. This is embarrassing. I don't want to talk about it. Let's talk about it now. All right. There's the vagina hole. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. There's the pee hole. Yes. And the butthole. Yes. How many? Count. That's three. There you but go. he told me there was three You're holes. You're still looking for the third <laughs> hole. <laughs> uh -huh. This is embarrassing. It should be. But what relationship should you have with your kids? Because... I didn't have that relationship with my, my my parents, of course. Like, I had a relationship. My dad, go do your homework, go do your chores, go to sleep. That was my relationship. Right. There was no, hey, dad, or hey, mom, this, that, and the other. When the kids sometimes ask me, it feels a little funny because I'm like, they're my kids, they're my friends, but I'm still dad. And I'm I feel a little awkward, funny talking about it. You typically walk that line perfectly. But there are times where I just want to be like, time out. Like what? Um, something happened like maybe three or four days ago. Mm -hmm. We were in the bed and I had to kick Maddie out the room. And I'm like, dude, like that's our daughter. There's just certain things you can't say or that you shouldn't oh, say in yeah. front of our daughter. Like sometimes you take it too far. Okay. And yes, I understand she's 18 years old and she's out there in the big bad world and she sees everything and she knows everything that's going on and she's not ignorant. Oh, she's I not a dummy. I, I remember what happened. So I remember what happened. There are things that she may discuss with her friends and things that she's privy to, but there are certain things that just shouldn't come from the mouth of her father. I, I remember what happened. I don't. I, I do. Oh my goodness. That's that's real. Anyway, real. Uh, it's not a fake glass anyway, by the way. <laughs> but um, I remember what happened. You made a hand gesture. You made a hand gesture like this. <laughs> I sure did. But it wasn't it wasn't what you think. It wasn't. But, but what was why did I make that hand gesture? I don't gesture? know why you made the hand gesture, but you made a hand gesture for people that just listened like you were jerking something off, right? I wasn't jerking something <laughs> off. <laughs> but you made a hand I, gesture and I, I said I might have I don't know what I was describing. I right, don't remember and I the topic said, of conversation. I said, oh, I can't wait for you to do that to me tonight. That's what I said. Meanwhile, I'm laying at the top of the bed. You're laying next to me at the top of the bed. And Madison is laying horizontally at the foot of the bed. And whatever I had in my hand, I just dropped it. And I'm like, Madison, I need you to leave. And I had to have a conversation with you. Like, 
It's That's certain, not okay. There's certain things I just, I couldn't let that go. I mean, it was a joke. <laughs> it was a joke. You want to be sitting there <laughs> like I can't, I can't do it. I didn't, and truthfully, I didn't even have to kick her out. As soon as you did that, she just got up, put her head down and walked out like, all right, I'm going to leave you two to your devices. Right. But I mean, our kids see different things. Like It's the, too much. Can you acknowledge that that's too much? Before you go on with an explanation, like that's can you a just... joke. Madison but watches but... Family Matters or she... The Simpsons, and yes, they do that on and there. And listen, she's a member of society, and society's inappropriate. Okay. Right. So clearly, she got the joke. She's not living in a dungeon. She gets it. But my point is, it shouldn't come from you. It's a joke. I mean, okay, we I understand say, that it's a joke. I didn't say, "Gear, yeah, can you jerk me off later?" And I jizz all over you. I didn't say that. I just what? How are we here? I just said I can't wait for you to do that for me tonight. That was. Uh, do you think that our daughter wants to imagine us having sex? All right, let me ask you a question. A month ago, Madison texted you, right? And what did Madison say? What she texted you? She texted me probably three times a day last month. Can you be a little bit more specific? She said, "Hey guys, don't you remember?" I go to sleep after 12. I can hear everything that's going on in your room at night. <laughs> oh, that wasn't. Well, how long did you say ago? About a month ago. Something. That wasn't a month ago. That was months ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, they, she know what's going on. She know how she got here. I mean, yes, I'm sure that she knows. I'm not her telling parents, her go out there and have like, sex. It's not like when we were young. Like, I couldn't even imagine my parents doing anything like that. I'm like, you still like that? Like, you just think that once you get to a certain age, like, you're just not interested in that anymore. Like, who knew? Our kids are but not- they, our relationship with our kids is different. Like, they see how we move. Like, they see the affection and right. everything. So I'm sure that they know that their parents are intimate, but they don't need details. Are you just going to keep, okay, I'll, like, I'll st- I'll stop disagreeing with, with me or right. deflecting? I'll stop with the details, but the jokes are funny. I mean, it was funny. <laughs> it wasn't funny. funny, but I think it was inappropriate. So what line What line should I draw? Where should I be? Where should parents be with their kids? You, I just think you're a little too comfortable. Um, but I think that there is, there's a fine line. There's a fine line. Um, and there's been very few times where I feel that on the kid's part, that that line began to be crossed. Mm-hmm. Um and if I ever see it starting to be crossed from their point of view, I just give them a look. Everything goes silent. They know and they reel it back mm-hmm. really quickly. Logan more so than Madison. What did he call? Like that day he called me bruh. And I'm like, listen. Bruh. <laughs> like, we're That's cool. Funny. Never in your life call me bruh. And then there was another time. This was just a few days ago. The last time was a few days ago. The first time was a couple of weeks ago. And it happened a few times in between. Maybe one or two times I thought it was funny. But he called me a loser. Like we were, because as you guys know, we compete when it comes to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And it could just be an argument or a disagreement. And that's a competition. But especially like with me and Logan. um, He's like a little mini male me. And I don't remember what it was, Mm -hmm. but he was like, all right, loser. And he's like going to run out the house. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a line. Like, we're cool, but keep in mind who I am to you. And we can play, we can laugh, we can joke, we can have fun, but don't go too far. Because every single time, it's like you move the goalpost. You move the goalpost. You move the goalpost. And then you wake up and again, it's like... How did we get here? And now I got to give you a black eye for you to understand that mommy don't play like that. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much had to describe it to him that way. So the next couple of times that it slipped, I just had to bring his attention to it. He apologized. And he's like, mom, that's just how I talk with my friends. And we have a friendly interaction. So it just comes out naturally. But my bad, I'm going to try my best to like control that. I just think that there needs to be lines of respect. The bottom line is if it makes either party uncomfortable, like being called a loser <laughs> mm-hmm. made me uncomfortable, then it needs to be addressed. And that's just a boundary that has to be set. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I'm going to try to walk a better line. I just wanted to talk to you about that because it was, I know there's, I'm sure there's people out there that have a relationship with their kids and they want a better relationship. You know, mm-hmm. maybe they didn't like the relationship they had with their parents. <laughs> so they're trying to get that, 
that perfect line, that perfect right way to have a conversation and talk and be a friend as well as a parent, as well as a best friend, as well as a, a sister or a brother, but they also know that they're the parent, just to give them that a little guideline. Well, let me ask you this question. So you were not friends with your parents. No. At all. No. And how did that affect you? What's the benefit from your perspective of having a friendly relationship? Because I know that I was friends with my parents. Mm -hmm. I After 13, I mean, I think I had my disrespectful moments up to 13. After 13, mm -hmm. um, there were a few times that I had disrespectful moments. Um, but we were friends. Like, we were... We were cool, mm -hmm. you know, and I told my parents everything. Right. They told me everything. I respected their opinions. I respected everything that they said. Um, so tell me, how do you feel as though not being friendly with your parents affected you? Uh, my parents, are, my dad is more militant. So it wasn't like there was no friends. It was I'm your father, you're my son, and whatever I tell you is for your best interest, you listen. If you don't listen, you're probably going to get locked up, shot, or killed. That's how he was. And it was one of those things where he was like, there is no friendship. It's, it's, hey, go do your chores. You know, you raised the kids different than I was raised. You know, if there was a problem in my house or something I didn't like, if I said, mom, can I go to this party? Or dad, can I go to this party? He said, no, it was no. You know, our kids, if, if they want to go somewhere and you tell them no, they'll be like, but why, mom? Explain. And y'all have conversations. Right. That, not at my house. That I don't even do that. Like, if I tell my son, no. Don't don't ask me no questions. Go talk to your mother. Don't know. Don't because I feel it's like talking back. If I say no, niggas no, and that's how my dad looked at my when my dad said no, it was no, and I just had to hope that it was for my best interest. And you know something, um, I think that there are positives and negatives from each side, right? Um, like for instance, with you, I know that you never went to your parents for advice. No, if there was an issue or a problem or something like that. You pretty much figured it out yourself. Correct. Whether you made good decisions or bad decisions. So not having that relationship, that's a pitfall. With raising our kids and me giving them so much it, leeway. Our kids tell us stuff that I was like, I can't believe they just told me or told us this. But So that's a wonderful thing. It I is. feel as though we know the vast majority, if not everything, that's going on in our kids' lives. Sometimes they overshare, sometimes they're in the room too long. I'm like, okay. Like we've meet we've met our quota of talking for the day. Like yeah, right. mommy has things to do, so we no, do. No, no, you don't understand. Our kids tell us everything. <laughs> I'm like, like you know, wow. when they come home, they tell us everything about their day and the girls that they talk to or try to talk to them, and if they had to take this and that, they take that and everything, which I love, I love. But sometimes it's a little like, no, get the fuck out of my room. <laughs> it's true, <laughs> but. Where I was never the parent that would resort to the because I told you so mm -hmm. or because I said so. Now I feel as though that's coming back to bite me. Right. Um, and it's not because they argue with us about being able to do things because they don't. Mm -hmm. But if there's something that Logan and I disagree on. That means I'm going to be in a conversation for an hour. That's right. Because he's going to hit me from every angle. And we already mm -hmm. know Logan thinks he's an attorney. He is. He's going to ask. He's going to try to trip me up and argue point for point, head for head to head. It's tiring. And it got to a point, like maybe two weeks ago, I'm like, dude, like, I'm about to become the parent. I'm going to remix this whole relationship that we have. And it's about to be because I said so. Mm-hmm. Because you, you, you're drawing too much out of me. Like, this is too much. Right. So don't abuse the privilege of your parents taking the time to explain things to you. Absolutely. So I think that a friendship does need to be forged between parents and children because you want a parent that can come and snuggle in your bed and feel as though if they did something wrong, they could come and tell you and Correct. have somebody that could bail them out and is not trying to figure out things on their own. So I just think that there needs to be a nice, healthy gray area. Okay. All right. I just wanted to touch on that for a little bit. Now, okay. let's, I told you guys, we promised you guys that we would get to a lot of emails. A lot of people are hitting us up. And if you want to hit us up, you can too. The KC crew at gmail.com. That's T H E E K C crew at gmail.com. All right. So let's go to the first email of the week. All right. 
All right, Anonymous. I am dating a guy and things have been going really well. It's been six months and we talk about marriage, buying a house together, and more kids. We are not officially yet. Which I think is she means official. Yeah, official. Oh, it does say official. I don't know why I said officially. We are not official yet, which is my choice because I have to date cautiously as a single mother and he respects that. I am a single mom with a child from a previous relationship and it's just him and his dog. We have a great relationship sexually compatible and have a great time together he even took care of me for eight nine days after i had emergency surgery my issue is that i do not like his social media presence he's basically a troll on social media and loves to argue with strangers on the internet specifically (laughs) twitter let me know his name too because i probably i I bet you said some bullshit about me once or twice but anyway this is mostly speaking for twitter as he doesn't use instagram too much he likes retweets and comments on pictures and videos that I don't think are appropriate. And I don't think that his social media presence represents me well at all. I would be mortified if my friends who I talk about him so highly came across his page. I'm just not sure what to do exactly. We don't follow one another on Twitter, but I came across his page because he was basically trolling under a viral tweet. Ever since, I look at his tweets every few days and it's low-key embarrassing. Again, we are not officially together, so I'm not sure how to approach it, if at all, especially because we don't follow each other on social media platforms. What do you think I should do? I want you to answer, but I do want to say one thing. What's that? I feel as though social media is kind of like alcohol. Mm -hmm. When someone gets drunk, a lot of times they say and do the things that they don't have the courage to say and do when they're sober. Mm -hmm. Instagram, Twitter, maybe people on Facebook, I'm not on Facebook, but people, there are people that use social media for the same thing. Mm -hmm. They are either, it's either their true profile or they create a fake profile where everything gets puffed up. Right Now all of a sudden they're like, you know, the Hulk as opposed to David Banner, and they let go. They tell you what they really think, and it's really an opportunity to see who people really are. Right. If you're seeing who he really is, this troll, and he's exhibiting all these things that you'd be embarrassed for your friends or family to see, and you're embarrassed yourself when you look Mm -hmm. yourself, you're looking at who he really is. I agree with you. And when he's in front of you and everything is copacetic, then maybe that might be his more reserved self, like his cool self, his mellowed out self, the self he wants you to see, the self that's easy to interact with. Then when you see him in his, like with all this light, like now he's who he really wants to be and he's saying what he really thinks. It's mean, it's evil, it's, you know, embarrassing. Mm -hmm. That's what you really have to work with because- that's like the secret sniper. Like that's like right. who he. I don't. Know, I I would be really really concerned. And, about and I that. agree. I agree with you. I, I think people that troll on social media are cowards. I think that they're hurt. Uh, probably been bullied before, and this gives them a way to do it back without their face being seen. So Obviously, bully before. Yeah. You know, if you bully, you still have to. You still have to be a a man as a bully or a woman as a bully, and still have to bully somebody and be in their face. Um. And the thing about bullying back in the day, yeah, you can bully, but there's going to be that one time where you bully somebody and you're going to get punched in the fucking face. And I think social media allows people to, to bully and to pick on people without getting punched in the face. And I think it is a, is, a, is a coward when somebody does that. And the fact that you have a situation already and the fact that, you know, you are blending his family with your family. I mean, all he got is a dog. But do you want your, your kids around it and you want your kids to see it? And yes, it's embarrassing. I would be embarrassed as shit if I was with somebody and they're on, they're on, they're trolling uh, celebrities or trolling regular people. That shit is weak and whack. And why do you have that much time? That's what I'm thinking. You know, because all I think is if you got that much time to troll somebody, you're probably broke living with your mama. It's probably just you and your dog, which it is. You probably eat kibbles and bits with your dogs because you're a punk and a sucker. That's or how I feel. you don't know how to prioritize things that are important in your life and arguing with strangers or co-signing equally demented strangers. There's no or, money in trolling. Excuse me? I said there's no money in trolling. Well, obviously, but what I'm saying is your priorities are messed. Like this is what you are doing with your time and there is no benefit. Right. 
there's no benefit to it. Like basically the benefit that trolls receive is just the ability to get something off their chest. Right. Because what? A few people might like your comment. So um, you have to you have to really take into consideration the person that you're dealing with. If this is how they're spending their time, they're not doing it in a positive way. Because listen, I mean, a lot of people spend a lot of time on Instagram. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, yeah, there are people that I've been around, and I mean, I spend some time on Instagram. Like that's where I get my news and certain blogs that I follow and things like that. But I've been around people that are constantly like every red light opening up their phone to look on Instagram. Like it's unhealthy. It is. And I enjoy it. But for me even, and I don't think that I abused it or I was on it that much, but it got to a point where I had to pull back. Mm -hmm. And that's really why if you follow me on Instagram, you don't really see that I post things on my story because I want to live in the moment and enjoy the moment. Uh-huh. I, I I post on her story. That's that's when you that's see usually him. You see if me, you ever see stuff, <laughs> that's that's me that post usually on her story. That's, I mean, I me. and don't get me wrong. I do want to post more on my story just to provide more content content and insight as to who we are, whether it's us or our family or whatever that I find that's interesting about us. But that's really the reason why I don't because. If I'm at a concert, I usually want to enjoy the concert. I don't right. want to be busy like filming and whatnot. Right, right, right. So yes, I do spend some time, but like I said, I don't abuse it. And if this person is on social media constantly and what you're seeing, what he's exposing of himself isn't positive, that's a double negative. Right. You know what I mean? And furthermore, if it's so bad that you're embarrassed, you have to understand that He's showing you himself. You're only six months in. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if it's really worth a conversation because he can still be the same person inside, but not really engaging in that activity to please you. But he's still that person inside. Right. That to me is more of the problem. So the best that I would have to offer here is to say you really need to take stock of who he is. Right. And decide if that's the person that you want to be with. Like, this is all information. Put it all on a scale and weigh it out. But I wouldn't spend time trying to change somebody. I, I would check him on it. I would tell him. I, w- I would be straight up and down with him. This is somebody you- you're thinking about possibly moving on with, having a relationship with. And if that's the person, I would check him. I'd be like, hey, be honest. Like, I, I see this. Like, what's- what kind of shit is this? And they don't follow each other. What isn't that of- weird? Yeah, that is weird. I- you're with somebody for six months. You don't follow him on his social media and he doesn't follow you? Uh- I think that's weird. That's too. weird. I think that's weird Listen, too. That's weird. I would definitely check him and and tell him how you feel. Like, yo, this is some thirteen year old shit. Like, what are you? Are you a grown ass man? Are you the type of man at age seventy you're up playing Fortnite and have no job and still live with your mama? Are you that type of individual? If you are, that's fine. But that's not for me and my son. You and your dog Benji, relax, chill on the side, and keep it moving. That's another thing. She has a child, and this would be a potential stepfather to that child. Who's a boy? Why, why are you moving the mic like you do to do to do? What was wrong with you? I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> Go ahead. That's what comes naturally right. to me. Um, but yeah, so she has a son. Mm-hmm. You have to think about how this person would be influential to your son, right? No, like, I, is that a good role model? I agree. Like, what are his thoughts, values, and morals? Like, is he someone that you really? I don't know. I just, from what I'm hearing, I don't really like him. Mm -hmm. So. But I definitely would check him. And then please, if you can, email us and DM us. Let me know how it goes. Because I'm I'm, I'm curious. And also let me know his Twitter handle. So I can block him. What? You didn't (laughs) like that I did that? Yeah, I know. Okay. Come on, bro. Bro. (laughs) Bro, come on, bro. Stop it, loser. Oh, here you go. Let's go to the next email. All right. All right. Uh, flicks and picks. Can you keep a vault of old memories? How long is too long? Is this about nudes? No, I don't know. Let's read it. A, a vault of memories? Mm. Sounds like a nice way to say nudes. Now, uh, let's see. I have been listening from the dawn of the podcast, and I love every minute of it. Hey. Y'all are my fav- favorites. I am a 30-year-old single woman, and I think I found a man in my dreams. He's not like Envy. He doesn't look as good as Envy. He's not as smart as Envy. He's not... Oh, she didn't put all that, but I added that in there. Anyway, I had been truly single for a little <laughs> over two years, enjoying my sex life, embracing my singleness, learning myself, and stacking my paper. Okay. Okay, you was out there okay. getting it in. 
Mm-hmm. Now, Mr. Man and I have known each other for 13 years. Friends of friends. Dated casually three years ago, and it didn't work out because he was not in the position to be who I needed him to be. It ended peacefully. This time around, he approached me totally different and is truly all about me. We are discussing moving in together in 2019. And he... Uh, we are well this 2020 anyway and he has already confirmed his intent to marry me we are very open couple but we are not in an open relationship we can talk about absolutely anything with ease no judgment no jealousy and really listen to one another he and our he and i are fond of an occasional threesome if the energy is right with the other female seldom is because i consider myself bisexual i have no desire to be in a relationship with a woman It is purely carnal. Our bond is tight, but here is my dilemma. He has a few homemade explicit videos from the past. See? Am I psychic or am I psychic? Nothing elaborate. Did I know or did I know? You knew. Nothing elaborate. Just a few one to two minute clips of past encounters. He has shown me three or so of them and is not trying to hide them. I am on the fence about whether I should ask him to delete them or not. I am torn about how I feel about him keeping these snippets of the past. (laughs) He says he doesn't go back to watch them regularly. Regularly. (laughs) (laughs) But only show me because only show me because it was brought up in conversation and I asked to see. I gazed how I felt when he let me view and a few and oddly enough, I was not upset or jealous and of course turned on. Fast forward for two months. And I'm second guessing how I felt and if it should be okay with it and if I should be okay with it. Are they just trophies that he should be willing to trash? Is this just the equivalent to watching or owning porn? Is this a low key form of cheating if he decides to watch them on a day? I'm not giving it up. Laugh out loud. What do you think? Her name is Brittany. What do I think? You want to ask me? No. You know what I think? Go ahead. Since you're, since you're so eager to tell me what you think. You got, I only got to delete those. See, but this is the thing, right? I, I, I was thinking about as I'm reading it. If I was him, I'd be like, do I got to delete him? You're not my wife. And it might not pan out to be my wife. So what I might then do. Then I have my vault of memories is destroyed forever. Right. Because okay. now all of a sudden you leave me and I ain't got my vault of memories. There are so many w- women that you can create new memories with. Right. But I might not want to. Because Stacy from Big Booty Stacy <laughs> from oh <might>, nine <laughs> was popping, right? You never know. Big Booty Stacy might be right. a star one day, and I want to hold that. Right. But if we're married, then everything goes. She ain't married. Let's talk about what's really going on now. If it's me and you had a video, all them shits gotta go. Okay, we've had this conversation before. Matter of fact, all, I, all them shits. Yes, all them shits. Gia okay. had letters from okay. other men. All them shit. Right? Had letters from other men and I found them. And what did I do with those letters? But you're a psycho, you know? What did we I do? Can't, Explain we can't to the really people what talk I do. about what you actually did I and put pertain them it on to this the email. grill and fry them up. Put them on the grill. Zoosh. He's not lying. You can't have not a mother. We married now. You can't. There's no. Uh, <laughs> these are just cute letters when I was six. Fuck that. <laughs> I wasn't Give a fuck about that seven year old boy. Gia, do you like me? Check it. Yes or check no. Whoosh. <laughs> Goddamn right. There ain't no letters coming on this motherfucking house. Anything in that box is no all checks. letters from me. Goddamn Only right. Only checks I'm bringing in the house. Goddamn <laughs> right. Anything that anybody has given to you, where are they? Yeah, like there's something legitimately wrong with not, you. Not though. only that. Remember, what else did I do? Somebody else gave me something. I ran over it in the car. Remember that? Yo. Now, we, Brit- t- we, told, wait, we told this story on a podcast. Now, Brittany, I'm not telling you to do what I do. But I'm just telling you what I do. Yeah, I was. We we talked about it in a past on a past podcast, so I'm not going to tell the whole story. But long story short, mm-hmm. in a few sentences. I was at a mall one day, and a guy was following me. He liked me. He kicked it to me. I told him I had a man. I was looking at a watch. It was a Movado watch. Movado. It was a thousand dollar Esperanza yep. watch. Mm-hmm. I continued to shop. He bought me the watch. Mm-hmm. He found my car. Mm-hmm. He left it on the car. And I came and I saw it. And it was like a little note, I think, about us being friends or something, maybe because I had a man. And can yeah. we go to, for coffee? I, I don't know, something like that. I was like, this is bananas. <laughs> I didn't even mm-hmm. 
have a full blown conversation with this guy. So I brought it home and I was like, boo, look, oh my God, let me tell you what happened. He became irate, put the Movado box before, behind the back wheel of his car and put the car into reverse. And then drive and then reverse and then drive <laughs> and then reverse and then drive and reverse could, and drive reverse again. I could understand if you didn't want me to wear it. I couldn't even give the thing away. You just threw away a thousand dollars. And that was a big deal to us when we were in college. A thousand dollars? Like, you, there's something wrong with you. Like, who does that? I would do it again. Men, do you agree? I would do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I think most men would be like, nah, we can give that to my mother for Christmas. Nope. No. Nah. It came in the box. We don't need that bad energy. <laughs> the camera guy was just like, nope. Nope. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> that's, not, that's, that's not the camera guy said no. But back to what I was saying. Nope. No, you got, no, no, no. I don't care what it is. It could oh, wait, be. Wait, a, hold on, hold on. So, wait, so you agree? This chick hit. I highly agree. He said you he highly, highly agree. agree you you would have reversed. I would have drifted over it. See? <laughs> and that's how I feel. Nobody's going to get that. Nope, nope. I don't care if it's a Birkin. I don't care what it is. I'm running over it at 36 times and then I'm chucking it in the ocean. Well, with that having had happened, if something like that happened again, I wouldn't tell you. I would just. So you're going to hide things from no, me? No, I would eliminate it so that it's bad energy wasn't in our presence, but. I wouldn't put it on a grill or run over it. Give it to a homeless person. But ne- getting back to, to our Brittany. email. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, I don't think it matters whether they're married or in a relationship or in a yeah, we non-marriage mar- relationship. We, we weren't married. The fact is that they're exclusive. Mm-hmm. And if you are exclusive with me and the idea is that we are going to work out and you're already talking about marriage and things of that nature, Mm -hmm. then that's the road that we're on. So we don't need anything that's going to provide negative energy like naked videos of you banging your exes. Uh, But see, but you know know why he shares it? Because she's bisexual. So he feels like he's showing her like like she's the homie. Like, oh, yo, 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 you see that ass? You see that? Like, you know, it's... That's the connection that he feels that he has with her. And that's probably one of the, one of the things that he likes about her. But again, boundaries. Like there has to be a line. Like, yeah, we both like chicks. We bring in an occasional chick. And it's for our own enjoyment and whatnot. clear it up because right now you, it sounds like we're talking about our relationship. Let's see why the cameraman opened his mouth. No, like. we, no we don't bring chicks in. <laughs> <laughs> She's speaking. You speaking from from. I'm speaking from. I was like, shit. We like chick. I, I, we've never had no. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> no, 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 no. From his perspective, he's like, we bring chicks in. Mm-hmm. So what's the difference? Like, you know, Natasha from the bar or from the club that we brought in. Like, same energy. Like, what do you care about my ex? Mm-hmm. But see, the difference is one is a mutual decision. And something else is a memory. A video is a memory from someone that you shared something with that right. didn't involve me in the past. So she probably doesn't want to come off as lame or, you know, like in her feelings. But the bottom line is if you're writing this email, it means that you don't like it. Right. And it makes you feel uncomfortable. You have every right to feel uncomfortable. Every new thing should be something that you guys venture into together, whether it is a threesome or whether it's just the two of you, whichever way it should be mutual. Anything from his past that's gonna provide a distraction should be gone. It should go on the grill. Like it should just- I'm with you. It should not, he shouldn't be resorting to that because that means that in his mind, it's not just about you. And it's not the same as a porno. Like porno, like, we don't, don't know them people. You don't know those people that are pronos, We right? don't know them people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's more for entertainment or that's something that if you're into it, you two could, you know, get together and lay in the bed and watch and go about your night however you want to go about your night. But someone that you had a relationship with and you might have had feelings for that you might have actually liked. It's like the difference between cheating, right? Mm-hmm. You cheat on me with a girl that you took home one night and you have no interest in dealing with her again. Or you cheat on me with someone that you really, really like mm-hmm. and you had an affair with. You talk to her on the phone mm-hmm. and you tell her your deepest, darkest secrets and all of that stuff. Like, that's much heavier. Mm-hmm. So him dealing with someone from their past as opposed to someone that they pick up together, two totally different things. Right. The situations are not equal. Any pictures, videos, anything, they got to go. I'm with you. Brittany, get rid of those videos. 
Now, do we have time for one email? Are we over an hour yet? Where we at? We got time for one more? Oh, we got time for one more then. All right, here we go. I'm trying to think which one I want to do first. They're both good. We, we're going to keep one for next week. Hmm. All right, let's do this one. This is name. His name is Oscar. All right. Hey, MV and Gear. I feel like I messed up my marriage. I hope I can do something to fix it. I did some snooping on my wife going through her phone. I had the need to go through it because there was time we stopped having sex. He wrote it like this, not me. She stayed to herself and I didn't feel any affection coming from her. I didn't think she physically cheated, but emotionally through text messages. I found text messages of her flirting with old childhood friends, but this kind of flirt definitely didn't seem like it was appropriate for a married woman. No kind of flirt is appropriate for a married woman. The guy told him he wanted her, wanted her and she replied, I want to, but you know I can't right now. We have a pretty open communication, so I have access to a phone. I asked her about this guy without bringing up what I went through, that I went through a phone. The she, downside of a phone up relationship. There you go. She gave me an answer, but it wasn't to my satisfactory knowing what I saw through the text. It kept eating me inside until I recently, I just had to tell her I went through a phone and found this text and I needed an explanation. She said this is how she and him talked ever since they were friends. She's just flirty. She agreed to cut it out, but now she's upset that I didn't trust her. Now I'm trying to get her to trust me that I don't have that trust, and I'm having difficulty doing so. I apologize, but I don't think that's enough. Please, what should I do? I love it. That's that mind bleep. You're goddamn right. That's Oscar. that mind bleep. Oscar, and she's listen, mind fucking the shit out of you I right now. I always... <laughs> I'm guilty. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. But on this podcast, I usually put things like this on the men. But this is a perfect situation where it's the girl trying to mind bleep Oscar, him. she's fucked up. What she's doing is fucked it, up. Yes. She's flirting with another dude and the shit ain't right. Don't Talking let about, her do I want no. you right now. I can't right now. So when can you? Next week? But, next hold month? Hold on. But you know why? Like if this were another time in another place in another world, it would be me and you, boo. Why are you looking through my phone though? Why I don't trust you anymore. Why are you looking through my phone? Oscar, she's playing the shit out of you. Oscar, Oscar, throw up the red flag. She's playing you. That yeah, I don't. You looking through my phone? If I didn't look through your phone, I would have never seen none of this. And you probably would have been somewhere with a, a guy's dick in your mouth. But what? Why are you look away? I'm just saying what it is. But Oscar, you did the right thing. You went through her phone, and don't worry about. Oh, now she can't. The camera trust people me. are mortified. <laughs> <Just> what? <laughs> now you can't trust me. How about I can't trust you? <laughs> How about I can't trust you? You're married and you flirting this guy. Who else you flirting? You should have went deeper in the phone. You shouldn't have told her. You should have just kept it low and just continued to look through that phone and see how far it went. And it just popped up on the ass. That's what you should have did. That's what I would have did. That's what you would have did. That's what I would have did. So what do you think? You heard my advice. It's just, you know, the fact that he's writing this email means that he was... A victim. He's hurt. He feels like his wife doesn't bleep. trust him. And he feels like he went too far. But you didn't go too far. But that's what people do. Men and women alike. You know, um, she stopped having sex with him. Mm -hmm. That's where you need to start. You need to start with why she stopped having sex with you in the first place. That should have been a conversation. That's not something that you just let go. Whatever she wasn't getting from you, clearly, she mm -hmm. felt as though she needed from somebody else right um whether it be attention whether it be that like nice little sexy flirty thing that people like to engage in flirting is a thing because it makes us feel good you know as a woman you flirt with a guy you kind of toy with him and it's like a game you see you know what kind of reaction you can evoke out of him and if he does then you kind of feel like you won and, you know, it's like a thing and then he gives it back to you and it's like a dance and it feels good. When you're in a relationship for a long time, people stop flirting with each other. People stop dating each other. And for lack of a better explanation, I think that it can get boring because you've lost that sexiness. You've lost that playfulness. You lost those cute little texts and those little doses of attention that make people feel wanted and stroke our ego. So maybe that started to diminish and she just wanted the attention from this guy. There's a chance that maybe she has no intention of ever seeing it through. 
I think a lot of times we toy with people for satisfaction, mm -hmm. you know, just for the satisfaction of it. Like how many people have you known? How many guys have you known that played around with a girl's emotion just to see if they could hit? Yeah, absolutely. Didn't really have any intention of hitting. They might have had a girl or a wife or hell, they might have been gay, but they played around mm -hmm. just to see if they could. And a lot of times that might be satisfaction enough. So truth be told, that could have been her situation. But the fact that her mind frame is a disloyal one where she's not putting you first and she's not saying to herself, it's that immature BS yeah. where if you feel like something is lacking in your relationship, you address it, you talk about it. And if you're with a like-minded person that's invested the same way in the relationship that you're invested, that has as much to gain, as much to lose and wants the best for the interactions and everything that the relationship has to offer, then they should be game to try to figure it out with you. But if you don't have that, then maybe you don't feel like you can talk to her and tell her what your issues is. And maybe she doesn't feel like she could do the same with you. So then you kind of like hit a wall. And that's when people oftentimes will look outside of their relationships to be fulfilled in the ways that their relationship can't fulfill them. But truth of the matter, they should have dealt with it together. Absolutely. And bro, 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 you did the right thing looking at her phone because obviously you found something. So don't fall into, well, I can't trust you now. That's bullshit. Oh, because now I'm mad at you because you went through my phone because you can't trust me. Now the trust has dissolved in this relationship. And now Oscar don't fall for this it. Don't, like, what are we doing here? We don't even trust each other. What are we doing here? Oscar, don't fall for it. That is some. Um... Mm -mm. Tell... Mm -mm. I'm not going to tell you what to tell her. Well, but... if you want to email us, you can thecaseycrew at gmail.com that's t-h-e-e -E caseycrew at gmail.com and we couldn't leave without telling you about the casey crew retreat i think there's like 20 rooms left so if you haven't got your room please the caseycrewretreat.com instead of doing a podcast around the country people ask all the time we decided to do something different try to go to jamaica do a podcast live in jamaica and have a fun weekend about it. So we're going to be doing parties, performances, comedy show. Um, shout out to Caesar and my financial team. They're actually going to be coming out with me and doing a, a financial podcast where we talk about all that. So we're going to have a lot of fun. There's parties. There's the red, yellow, green party. What? What's it called? It's called the stoplight party. You know what and I you, mean. Listen, I told you what it was like four times. Tell Stop them one acting more time. like now I'm not telling them what they know what it is because they've heard me say it over and over again. You know what it is. They know what it is. Now you have to come and experience it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. There's gonna be an all white party. There are mm -hmm. gonna be excursions. There's going to be all types of things. And this we're adding more things to the list. So as we get a little bit closer, we'll let you know how you should dress, what you should pack, and we're going to really get involved with it. So yes, and, start planning. And fuck your diet, all right? Don't worry about it. How it are you going to tell them that when you're exercising? Look at him. Doesn't he look, and he's starting to look like nice and slim and trim. Look at ow, ow. See, But you've been in the gym with Richie like every day. Right, but but then you tell them to bleep that. You know what that is? What? That's a setup. No. So all the guys come with their guts and then you come Coach like all slim that. and trim. It sounds like a setup because you want to be the cutest one on the beach. That's foul. Well, you women, don't worry about it. Have your ragamuffin. Fellas, don't worry about it. Have What's your, a your, ragamuffin? What's it called? A muffin? muffin? A muffin top. Whatever. A muffin, muffin top. top. Ragamuffin, you know what I mean. Yeah, right. Fellas, it's all good. Have the gut. What are you talking gut. about? We're just going to have a good time. No, we're not going to videotape ourselves and be uncomfortable. We're just going to have a good time. It doesn't matter. Let your bellies hang out. Mine is going to hang out. If I have one at the time, I'm working out. I ain't going to front. I'm working out. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking pretty sexy. I look in the mirror sometimes. I'm looking pretty sexy in the mirror. But no, anyway. You didn't do that. You... Yes, there you go. There you anyway, go. but... We want to see you there, <laughs> thecaseycrewretreat.com for more information. Yes. All right? And it's time to get up out of here. We'll see you guys next week. I'm DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And that was another edition of the KC Crew. Doodles.
two, one, let's go. 